Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning! Yeah! Welcome back, welcome back to Bible Read Along. My name is Daniel and uh, my wife Ashley's joining us too. Um, she's just getting her coffee and stuff still. What are you drinking this morning? What are you getting? Are you ready? Are you running around? Do you feel like you're behind time today? Um, we are looking at Acts chapter 10. We try and take one scripture each and every weekday, go through it, understand the context, understand application, and uh, just learn the word of God together. Questions are welcome. Comments are welcome. Fill that chat. We want to hear from you. So please feel free to be a part of this as well. She's not making it. She's wearing it. So <laughs> she just spilled it, I guess. Um... I'm Daniel, as I said, <laughs> Ashley's here. We don't know who you are. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Put it in the chat. Say hello. Let us know that you're here. If you haven't as well, please check out BibleReadAlong.com. Um, videos are available on Facebook and YouTube. We now have podcasts as well for our audio listeners. Welcome to you guys. And we have a TikTok channel that's kind of... It extra content um, exclusive to TikTok. So if you want to see some of those short content, um, you know, Bible verse one verse at a time, a little bit of preaching, a little bit of praying, a little bit of it, a little bit of everything in there, um, all still Christ-based, Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled content. So if you want to check that out on TikTok, again, we are at Bible Read Along Official on TikTok if you want to check that out. Um, Morning, Mike's here. Let's head over to our comments for just a second. I see my brother Mike's here. I see Shanna. Ro, good morning, Shanna. We are so glad that you are here live with us. Thank you for joining us today. And if anyone else is here as well, again, please feel free to just put your name in the comments. Say hello. Tell us what you're drinking this morning. I see Matthew Baker just joined in from Kelowna, B.C., so glad you are here as well. If you missed this week, we had Pastor Brian Thompson. Um, he led Acts chapter 9. It has been edited and posted, so now the full version. Sorry for those that were waiting. We were having some tech issues with internet, but it is live. It's ready, and you can go watch that at any time. He did a great job teaching Acts chapter 9. Um, he taught an eight-word eight prayer. Jesus what do you want me to do? And uh, it was pretty powerful. So go check that out if you haven't yet already. And uh, we have a prayer course coming up. Um, lots of things on the go. There's always lots on the go. We, I have written a book, The Acts of Prayer. This is a 30-day prayer challenge. And um, it, is, it is to help your personal prayer life just go to a new level in a systematic way. How do you make a, have a system of prayer each and every day that's just going to take you to a new level? It's an interesting cup. My wife has a homemade mug here today. Um, so check that out. That is available. The Acts of Prayer, the course, is a 90-minute-ish course in person in Red Deer, Alberta, or online on zoom and we would love to have you join us for one of those times let's take a minute and pray and then we're going to just jump right into acts chapter 10 and learn the word of god together so lord thank you so much for your word thank you god for your life and your truth and even as we are in easter week lord we just pray that you you we turn our eyes to you your your crucifixion your burial your resurrection that lord you you paid a price you didn't owe and we owed a debt we could never pay and so thank you lord jesus for your death and resurrection we put our faith and trust in you in jesus name amen amen all right acts chapter 10 not luke 
on the on the Axe Nine video I put Luke, and then I noticed I did this morning on YouTube too, so I have to go change that. But we are actually in the book of Acts, written by Luke, not the book of Luke. So Acts chapter ten. If you're ready, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Type in the chat that you are ready. And I got to pull up the right verse here. There we go. Acts chapter 10. Welcome everyone. If you're with us, say hi. Please take a minute. We want to hear from you. Tea break. Let's go. Acts chapter 10. Cornelius calls for Peter. Cornelius calls for Peter. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout, God-fearing, and he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius! Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. Then the angel answered, Your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Getting the Joppa. Getting the... Joppa. What? <laughs> <Joppa>. <laughs> Getting the Joppa? <laughs> um, <laughs> so he sent them to Joppa. I don't understand the joke. Um, when the angel had spoken and had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that happened and sent them to Joppa. Peter's vision. So Cornelius, an Italian um, centurion soldier for the Roman government from Italy. Um, he has a vision of an angel and says, go find Simon, who's called Peter. Peter, at the same time around there, is having a vision also. Peter, about noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and he wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. What does this mean? Oh, there's, there's a uh, stuff in the Bible that we really don't talk about a whole lot, but it says he fell into a trance and he's having a vision as well. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to the earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, I love this. He has a vision. He tests the vision. God, not this can't be you. I'm just hungry. I'm just praying hungry. It said he was hungry while he was praying. This, this, this can't be right. And then the Lord confirms it. Now, you got to remember at this time, they didn't necessarily, they had some Old Testament scrolls. They didn't have the New Testament that we would have today. So he would need to compare this to some Old Testament scripture, Old Testament knowledge that he has. So he's testing the Lord. Now he's sitting when it's done. He doesn't just run out and go, yay, hamburger time. Um, he goes, Lord, what does this mean? I want to interpret this correctly. Sometimes when God speaks to us, we rush into things. Oh, wow. Or if somebody imparts a vision. Or if someone imparts a vision or I see the Lord, you know, and they speak these things. And I had a guy, we were at a week of prayer and fasting um, last week. 
And this gentleman came up and began to prophesy over me. And <coughs> Excuse me. It is someone I know. It is someone I respect. It's someone that I feel knows the voice of God very well. And they're prophesying and they're saying this and this and this and this. And the end of the prayer comes and I look at him and I just went, hmm. And he goes, that's, that's your response? I said, yep. I said, it's good what you're saying, but I need to weigh this out now. I need to look at it and go, God, what are you really saying? Because I don't want to just take something that may be misunderstood and run with it. And it's not what God is trying to say. Peter is doing the same thing here. Wondering, what does the vision mean? Lord, you gave it to me. What does this mean? Animals coming down in a sheet, rise, kill and eat. And then the voice, I would say, no, I can't. It's unclean. And God would say, don't say anything is unclean that I call clean. While Peter is wondering, verse 17, about the meaning of this vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and they stopped at the gate. And they called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. Remember, he's up on the roof, so he can hear this. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are here looking for you. Little context highlight here. One earlier manuscript says two. Another manuscript does not have a number. Okay, so our earliest manuscripts, again, this is, why would there be different numbers? Well, because you remember Luke is getting this from eyewitness accounts, and then he's writing it down and making it known. Um, so some might say, oh, I remember. Yeah, I think there was two guys that showed up at the gate. Another guy goes, no, oh, I think there was three. Um, you know, maybe we know from Cornelius and others. Yep, there was three. I sent two and a soldier. Simon, three men are looking for you. Verse 20. So get up, go downstairs, do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the man, I'm the one you're looking for, why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is reject respected rather, sorry, by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Then Peter at Cornelius' house. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. So Cornelius sent his, you know, Cornelius is a, he's a lead soldier in the army. He understands authority. You guys go, bring him back. Well, he's gone. He's going, okay, I'm going to prepare family. Get ready. We're going to have, we have a special guest coming. Because when Cornelius sends someone to go get someone, they come. <laughs> Whether they want to or not. What did you hear? I don't know. No. I didn't hear anything. We're listening in case there's anyone in our house. If we suddenly lose broadcast, send help. No, I thought I heard it like a cat. Oh, did you? The door's open right now because she was just outside. Oh. No How extra. No are? extra kitties. No extra kitties. All right. So the following day he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him, fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up. Stand up. I am only a man myself because Cornelius has heard. You ever been star starstruck? You ever met someone where you were just like, wow, yeah, they, they are. Ashley felt this way with our pastor at first, Cornelius. you know, like, and, and some of our leaders, they're on stage in front of thousands of people every week. And they're, you know, they're, they're doing broadcasts and TVs and this and that. And, and there's this awe of, oh man, I remember I got to do a call with some of the Celebrate Recovery leaders from the States. 
and I was only brought on on this two hour call. I was brought on camera and audio for for literally like two minutes. Um, but I'm there with Johnny Baker and I'm there with Selena and I'm there with Rodney Holstrom and some of the CR leaders. And I was a little bit awestruck. I'm like, ah, what do you say? How do you say it? To, you know, be funny. Don't be weird. Um, yeah. So have you ever been starstruck? This is what Cornelius is feeling with Peter. I've heard stories of this Peter. I've heard of what he's doing. He's preaching and teaching. He walks by people and his shadow heals them. I've heard these stories that, that you know, he got up and 5,000 men all gave their heart to the Lord and 3,000 people all gave their heart to the Lord and committed their lives to Jesus. He's heard him. So Cornelius is a little starstruck here at Peter. And Peter says, hey, I'm just a dude. I'm just a guy just like you. I'm a dude. Okay, verse 27. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. Peter didn't know what he was even walking into. He thought he's going to meet Cornelius. Suddenly, he's in a large room with lots of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But... God, one of my, the greatest phrases in the Bible, but God, you know, this is, this is wrong. This is not how I was raised. This is, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. He understands the vision now. So that when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? He understands now was the vision about food. Yes, I believe it actually was. And we see that. Why do I say that? Because later in scripture, we see more context from Peter and from Paul about the food and what to eat or not eat. Um, but he understood that this, this, this scripture of this vision of food that he had actually has a deeper meaning. And the meaning is always people don't call unclean people when God's calling them to be clean. Don't call them unclean. Don't call them outcasts, rejects, you know, we don't want anything to do with you when God's saying, I'm calling them into the kingdom. Cornelius answered, three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in shining clothes. So what do we know about angels from his encounter? Shiny, bright, ooh, stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayers and remembered your gifts to the poor. Isn't this interesting? Even, even though he doesn't know Jesus yet, we're going to find that out in a minute. He's not, he's not what we would consider saved, but he is religious. He is. And I don't want to, I don't want to get weird on that because I, Christianity is a religion by the way. And the world sees Christianity as a religion, but we see that he is he is, I'm trying to highlight, he is doing things. He's helping the poor. He says prayers, but he doesn't actually have that relationship with Jesus Christ. We need a relationship to empower our religion or else we just have a religion that's empty. And it just is about the duty that we do. Um, he is a guest, uh, sorry, send to Joppa for Simon, who's called Peter. He's a guest in home, the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So, I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. You know, like, you must have a message ready because God told me to send you. So, what's the me what's the message? You know, Peter's kind of getting put on the spot here. <coughs> how long is this chapter this is a big one isn't it oh okay okay peter began to speak i now realize how true it is that god does not show favoritism this vision that i had sometimes god gives us a verse a vision a song um he gives us something thank you babe even an encouragement or a word or a thought that sticks with us. You ever had something that just, it doesn't leave you. It sticks with you. And then sometimes you don't recognize it until later. Suddenly you're in the, <coughs> you're in the right place. And you go, yep, 
that verse makes sense. That vision makes sense. Why has this song been in my heart? It makes sense now. Okay. I'm going to keep breathing. We're going to keep reading. In the name of Jesus. Infirmity out. Okay. Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. What does this fear mean? It doesn't talk about being afraid of God, but is placing God in his rightful place. Honor. I, I've God is God and I am not. You know the message God sent <laughs> to the people. <clears throat> okay. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened through the province of Judea, beginning <laughs> in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus. <laughs> I am so sorry, guys. You know what happened from Galilee after the baptism John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. So Peter's just saying, you've heard this stuff already. You've been around. You've been around the centurion soldiers. You've been around the Roman guard. You've heard this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. How he went around doing good, healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. Gospel message always includes the cross. Um, David Wilkerson, who wrote The Cross and the Switchblade, um, and is the founder of, I believe it's the Teen Challenge Recovery Group. He was the one that started that about 100 years ago. Um, really? Yeah. Um, he, he used to say this, you know, beware of a gospel with no cross. Because we have to have the cross in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to have that he died and rose again. We have to have that his, his blood was shed. Why? Because Hebrews says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. This isn't just a, why do we look to the cross? It's not because it's a nice piece of jewelry. It's not because it's a good symbol. The cross to Christians represents the beating, the suffering, the bleeding of Jesus Christ. But then it also represents that he was buried for three days and he took, the Bible says he took, um, he took sin and death captive and he rose again on the third day, proving he is the son of God. And if we place our faith in him, he will forgive our sins and we are accepted into the kingdom of God. The cross means all of that. The burial, the beating, the burial, the resurrection. God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. Interesting little study side note here. If you want to study, um, learn more about the Trinity or you're arguing with people about the Trinity, look up verses about Jesus being raised from the dead because there's some verses that say God raised him from the dead. There's some that say Jesus raised himself and there's some that say the Holy Spirit raised him. So either there was three different Jesuses or it is one God, the same God who raised him every time. Um, little free tidbit there for you. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So Peter here is saying, he did all this and I was there. I actually ate with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people, to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness through his name. Now, interesting, because I do all these arguments with people online right now, especially 
What did Peter just say? The whole Bible points to him and whoever believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Whoever believes in him receives forgiveness. I didn't hear any mention of baptism in here. Now, do I believe in baptism? Yes, but we see that baptism is not what's needed for salvation. Why? Because we just see Peter share the gospel, a whole big room. If baptism was actually needed for every salvation, I think Peter would preach about it a lot more. But people take one verse and go, see, Peter said, repent and be baptized. So that must mean we have to be baptized. You see, Paul got up and he was baptized. Yeah, well, it says he got up after Ananias, Acts 9, we just read this this week, after he was prayed for, he was healed, scales fell from his eyes because he was blind, he rose up and he was baptized, and the rest of that verse says, and he ate some food. Does that mean we have to eat food to be saved? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. We do not. The tells us not to eat unclean meat either, but we do that every single day. <laughs> well, now because it's clean. Oh, <laughs> that was the vision that Peter just had yeah. of unclean meat. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's good though. So there's these things that sometimes we take one verse and um, we make it into a thing that it's not. Repent to be baptized. All of these people are saved. Now I'm going to go a step further here. Not only they receive forgiveness through his name. Let's go to verse 44. While Peter is still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. They haven't been baptized yet. So you can be saved. You could even receive the Holy Spirit before you are baptized. The Holy Spirit came on them and they who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit <laughs> had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues or other languages, and praising God. Now again, we've talked about tongues a little bit, but this is now another time in Scripture where we see it. <coughs> I don't believe that speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. I believe it's a evidence of the Holy Spirit. Um, you can study that, look into that your own though. Um, or message me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Then Peter said, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They're already saved. They've already received the Holy Spirit. Now they're being baptized. Three separate events that happened in their Christian walk. We need salvation. We need baptism. It is a, it is an obedient sign. It is part of the process. It is not what gives you salvation, though, and the Holy Spirit. We need all three. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered them, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked for Peter to stay with them a few more days. That's it. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Whew. Breathe. What did you think? Cornelius had a vision. Peter had a vision. Peter was brought to Cornelius' house. The visions lined up. Then he just preached the gospel. People were saved. People were filled with the Holy Spirit. People were baptized. We also see here that all of the 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 work that Cornelius and his family was doing, helping the poor, doing good. Even before they were saved, God still saw it as an offering unto him. What do you think? What did you see? Um, Shanna says, empty religion doesn't lead to life, but relationship with Jesus does. Um, amen. It does. And we need that relationship. We can't just do good without the gift of goodness, the king of goodness pouring into our life. And yeah, so that's it. That's it. That's Acts chapter 10. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we will be back tomorrow <laughs> with more. Um, please check out all our social media, Facebook, YouTube, podcasts.
uh, TikTok. And um, this really, we are just starting to run. There's books, there's courses, prayer courses coming. All of this is only possible right now because we are funding it. But if you would like to partner with Ashley and I and help move this forward, you can send us a gift as well through PayPal or through e-transfer. And all of that info is available at BibleReadAlong.com. Thanks for being here. God bless. Bye. Bible Read Along. Committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com